بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر ویورز السلام علیکم یو آر واچنگ فور سائٹ اینڈ آئی ایم یور ہوسٹ فیصل رضا خان ویورز پاکستان اینڈ یونائٹیڈ اسٹیٹس بائی لیٹرل ریلیشنز آلویز ان اسٹارمس بٹ ڈسپائٹ آف بمپی روڈس بوتھ اسلام آباد اینڈ واشنگٹن آلویز کمیٹڈ ٹو ہیو اسٹرینگتھنڈ بائی لیٹرل ریلیشنس پاکستان فار ٹو یو ایس لیڈ وارس ان افغانستان اینڈ بورن ان پرسیڈنٹیڈ لاسز ان ٹرمز آف مین اینڈ مٹیریل But despite of that, U.S. has never realized and accepted the ground realities. The same happened after the U.S.-led coalition forces irresponsible withdrawal from Afghanistan when it has left high-tech U.S. weaponry along with the uh, always evaded the Indian hegemonic designs and also the activities on Afghan soil given clean check to remaining terrorist organizations and as a result They have used Afghan soil and launched direct attacks on Pakistan. But still lots of hopes are hanging upon uh, Pakistan-US relations as Chief of Army Staff General Saeed Asim Munir is on US visit. This is the first ever visit to the United States. During this important visit, he has lots of engagements with the political and defense leadership of the United States. During this visit, he has not only talked about the Pakistan-US relations in terms of uh, counter-terrorism and joint trainings along with military to military relations, but also regarding Kashmir issue. To talk on these all aspects, we have today in our studios, Dr. Wasim Ishaq, he is the senior analyst. Along with him, uh, Hassan Khan, he is the senior journalist. Most welcome to you. And then also brigadier retired Hamid Rashid Malik he is joining us online most welcome to you sir <coughs> my first question to you uh, Dr. Wasim that uh, as uh, we have discussed about uh, in the last programs that uh, Pakistan and United States has a very bumpy relation in between despite of that the Pakistan uh, being the frontline state uh, in the war against terrorism so how do you see this perspective that why these relations are still sticky Thank you, Faisal. Pakistan-US relations have always been on a roller coaster ride. Ever since Pakistan decided to join US-led bloc in the heightened tension of Cold War days. But however, we have to appreciate the skillful diplomacy of Pakistan and the visionary leadership what they decided to join US camp because at that time Pakistan badly needed US support for economic development, for defense development and for overall development and prosperity of Pakistan in view of the expansionist Soviet Union. So in that context, Pakistan did very well. Pakistan has been part of US-led alliance system of CETO and CENTO, which provided us not only the security umbrella, but also a lot of military hardware to enable Pakistan's defense forces to actually meet the threat on its eastern border as well as on its western border. Also, we have seen that United States had actually tried to balance out between India and Pakistan during Pakistan's 1965 war as well as 1971 war. However, as the events unfolded, Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979 and 9-11 incident inside United States. In both cases, Pakistan's relevance to the United States increased and Pakistan proved to be a frontline state for the United States. Pakistan was granted non-NATO ally status in 2001, which is still going on. So in all such cases, while our relationship has been transactional in nature, but it was more event oriented. Unfortunately, whenever Pakistan's relevance from those war on terrorism and after the demise of Soviet Union receded, the United States put Pakistan under sanctions. So this is the biggest strategic mistake with the United States did in 1991 and also as the United States changed its policy up till 2017. However, the United States has realized two grave mistakes which they did in case of Pakistan. One, hyphenation of Pakistan-India relations previously mm. and dehyphenation and hyphenation of Pakistan-Afghanistan in terms of FPAC strategies. Obviously. So both these things have now been realized by the United States. It is no more hyphenation or dehyphenation. It is now Pakistan-US bilateral relations right away. And now we have to travel and take a fresh start whereby General Asim Munir's visit is a very, very significant. And let me also tell you that in South Asia specifically and wider Asia Pacific, while the US-China relations are very significant, in South Asia, 
Pakistan US relationship and Pakistan China relationship are very very significant hmm. as we proceed and we can highlight more. definitely your point well taken Hassan uh, but how do you see that uh, how much Pakistan US relations evolved and where we stand right now look I think is uh, Dr. Saab has uh, rightly I think he go through the history of 70 years or 75 years of Pakistan the US relation and he's rightly mentioned it that mostly these were e, uh, based on events or mm, mm. somehow we call it transactional relation between the two countries. So definitely US was a superpower and is still a superpower and Pakistan was just a new state mm. emerging facing all side whether security problems or economic problems. But at that time I think we need uh, to appreciate the way uh, US was also helpful to Pakistan. One thing uh, which in US Pakistan relation is somehow as a, a, I, I use it as an irritant is that US has always remained close to Pakistan whenever there was a dictatorship in Pakistan whether it was a Yub dictator whether it was Ziyas dictator whether it was Musharraf's dictator and unfortunately it's uh, the kept away uh, from Pakistan whenever there was a democratic setup whether it was in 70s or whether it was in the 90s era um, is rightly mentioned the post Afghan uh, um, uh, the Soviet withdrawal, the first, I will oh, use it, the first yes. withdrawal, mm. the Soviet withdrawal and it, sh it just locked the door and went away uh, uh, taking the bus stop at the, the, the first bus, uh, bus at the road. And now this is the second time they, uh, when the US withdrew from Afghanistan, again uh, it uh, I think somehow uh, left Pakistan, what we call it high and dry, mm. uh, to face the new, the new emerging situation. Then even yesterday uh, the UN Security Council called against the current, uh, the current uh, what you call it uh, administrations or the current setup in Afghanistan as a threat to the region. Hmm. So uh, unfortunately it's right, you rightly mentioned in your, uh, your intro that uh, the, 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 it was not a proper withdrawal and uh, it was not uh, I think uh, it was considered to be a hasty one. A hasty I think a hasty withdrawal leaving all the things. Look US was here uh, uh, just uh, liberating when it was uh, back in 2002 the Afghans from a group which they call it the a, a character from the Gothic novels. It mm -hmm. was the, the, the famous word used by the US administration then but after 20 years unfortunately they brought the same characters which they call the Gothic uh, the, the, the characters from the Gothic novel and left Pakistan and the other regional countries to deal with it but I think we need to be a bit positive as per the, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, both the countries should uh, uh, use this as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an element of separation. Uh, I think this is the right time, uh, you know, when General, As uh, General Munir is there, uh, we are resetting our relations and historically if you see whenever a Democrat is there in the US administration, so we have this problem of uh, uh, Pakistan's being kept away uh, from Washington in both Islamabad and uh, but historically there is very good relation between military to military between the two countries and I think that work as an anchor uh, for both the countries to keep them uh, in a way somehow connected to each other. Now this resetting of relation is I think being carried out in a new environment you know Pakistan has a very close closest of relations with the Chinese uh, maybe uh, this the CPEC and the BRI is what the word the buzzword is that US and some uh, especially the India um, they are that they, they don't want that much engagement of China definitely you are absolutely so right I, because so of the I think this China, resetting containment of China policy there are problems will, yeah, yeah, so definitely uh, to include uh, in this uh, discussion uh, Brigadier Hamid the uh, uh, how do you see the first ever visit of the Chief of Army Staff General Asim Munir uh, to US and his uh, 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 different uh, meetings with the high ups and the leadership of the United States? Faisal, we would have to realize and be cognizant of the fact what are the global and regional atmosphere and environment prevailing now. And especially other aspect is the cross-border terrorism emanating from Afghanistan and the weapons left behind by the U.S. and other European forces in Afghanistan. And I think in this uh, backdrop, this visit of Chief of Army Staff General Sayyid Asim Munir is of paramount importance, where he will be able to convey to the uh, U.S. official, especially the Pentagon, that they need to look into the region from a very different perspective as they have also given in their narrative of the Indo-Pacific policy as well as their recently issued national security policy where there is no mention of Pakistan. 
वेयर एज पाकिस्तान बींग लोकेटेड ऑन ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू स्ट्रेटिक लोकेशन एंड ऑल्सो हैविंग द ब्रंट्स ऑफ क्रॉस बॉर्डर टेरिज्म नॉट ओनली फॉर अफगानिस्तान but also the indian proxy war of terrorism being launched through the sides of afghanistan and through the ttp here i would like to highlight that pakistan need to sensitize us officials that they need to have their lien on the afghan government as it was decided in the doha agreement also that they should pressurize and also pursue the afghan taliban government of afghanistan that they need to behave responsibly they need to be a very responsible regional collaborating country and they should not let their soil to be used for cross border but you said you have you have just mentioned about the leftover weapons so what would be the ultimate solution to them because uh, they are implicating uh, pakistan they are uh, 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 imparting adverse effects upon pakistan in the form of terrorism as far as these weapons concerned at i already alluded to that the us official has presently lien with the afghan taliban government and they need to sensitize the afghan taliban government that these weapon need to be taken care of and these weapon should not be left unattended that these fall into the hands of terrorists and the other aspect on which i think the general secretary asam munir will be discussing with the us official is that they have now over the horizon capability for afghanistan and what we have seen the drone attack last year in which uh, the uh, amal zahri is supposed to be killed or like that there are rumor of that but at the same time the uh, us officials especially the military can collaborate with pakistan so that the financing of the terrorist is also addressed and apart from that the uh, strikes by the afghan taliban government against the ttp are arranged and i think if the afghan taliban can take certain action against the is khurasan and to which us official has also reported that their threat of is khurasan has been eliminated to a large context the same action can be taken by the afghan taliban government against the ttp also definitely your point well taken uh... Uh, uh, Dr. Vaseem, when we are talking about um, U.S. policies towards the region, uh, at one point in time, uh, it seems that uh, it's kind of Indo-Pacific policy, and on the other hand, there is South Asia. So, South Asia is different than in Indo-Pacific, or uh, what they call Indo rather than Asia. Sure. Why there is bifurcation? Okay, there is a difference. Actually, when United States decided to contain China back in its national security strategy of 2017. and made it as a number one priority for us national security that is a great power competition mm. and also in bracket russia comma china so in that case when they decided so china is a peer competitor of uh, united states now with a 17 trillion economy and us economy is 26 trillion and chinese economy is going to surpass us economy by 2035 so in that context and the way Chinese economy is growing by good about six percent, mm. and U.S. economy is growing by two percent. So, in my prediction, the overlap when the China is likely to cross U.S. economy would be somewhere in 2030. So, in that case, China is more peer competitor of United States than Russia, which is having just about two trillion U.S. dollars, mm. despite the fact that it has more military and the strategic weapons. So, in that context, containing China physically was more important. Therefore. rather than a complete asia pacific they narrowed down the scope in the indo pacific only so mm. indian ocean mm. and the pacific ocean where india was granted a pivotal role so therefore along with the india it is japan it's south korea philippine and all those countries which were included in pivot to asia are all the east asian countries and going up to australia and a separate arrangement was made then australia united kingdom and the united states in the form of aquas we will discuss more on that uh, uh, regarding uh, army chief's visit to uh, united states uh, do you think that the hasan that uh, biden administration during its uh, last some months uh, uh, going to give some sort of uh, some sort of relief to pakistan regarding security or socio economic aspects look i think as per security aspect is concerns pakistan is i think well enough uh, to uh, to have its own uh, security arrangement and already you know we are almost self sufficient in doing that but despite that definitely uh, historically pakistan's military depended upon the, uh, the 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 equipments and other things and the training 
uh, from the U.S. And we have a very good historical relations between the military to military. Even our intelligence agency, the CIA and the ISI, etc., they were very close. And I think worked for almost 50 years in a very close coordination. So I think this is an asset for us, which uh, we are inheriting uh, from the past uh, administration. It is the U.S. administration, it is the Pakistan administration. So I think General Munir visits is definitely it is happening at a very crucial time. Uh, as I said, the new world, uh, but I will say the new regional order, uh, which is emerging, especially the China, especially the CPEC and the BRI, etc. Now the, uh, the 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 importance of India, which Dr. Saf is referring to, which the um, the, EU, the use is giving uh, to uh, to India, uh, but. You can't ignore Pakistan because Pakistan has a very strategic position. Obviously, Pakistan it's is a very important It's not only country. the locational positions. I think uh, if you look at Pakistan's in the uh, politically, uh, Pakistan is a very, uh, the, I think, is an important member of the Islamic bloc, uh, one. And uh, historically, I think Pakistan's played a very important role in the international politics um, everywhere because Pakistan's, uh, uh, since from the, from the day first, you know, whether it is the Middle Eastern problems, whether it is in the in the West or in the Africa, etc., Pakistan has taken a very, very, very crucial so position. So your, your point well but taken. Your point well taken. Uh, uh, Dr. Wasim, when we are talking about military to military relations, training aspects, capacity building, uh, some sort of uh, defense and security cooperation uh, between Pakistan and United States, so in the backdrop of uh, uh, Army Chief's visit, how do you see any success would be there? Because in Trump administration, there were some embargoes on Pakistan. Yes, I think uh, this visit is very significant. One from two, uh, two aspects. One that it is Army Chief's first visit. And first visit could be a just pleasantry visit. Ple uh, and then also, uh, we had a sort of blockade in our relationship since last few years. So this is an ice-breaking visit also. From the military to military, we have a history of 75 years where Pakistan and the United States military to military relations has always been very cordial, very congenial and very constructive. So therefore, in that context, this visit is very important and it will open few new mm. eras. For example, the officers exchange program, the officers training exchange programs, then few military hardware upgradation, then uh, renovation, uh, the repair and uh, rehabilitation of certain uh, aircrafts or certain uh, naval assets and also the army assets. So in that context, it is an overall overarching visit which would be more comprehensive in terms of not only the defense cooperation, but my research also indicates that other areas of cooperation like the education cooperation, the climate change cooperation, counter-terrorism cooperation, counter narcotics cooperation, all these areas are also there on the agenda which will okay. be discussed. Okay. Brigadier Hamid, uh, when we are talking about bilateral relations, uh, we have seen over the years that uh, 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 both the countries collaborated a lot in between, but uh, uh, US support is always very vital in rooting out terrorism. So how do you see uh, this visit to uh, United States uh, by the Chief of Army Staff in that context? This is a golden opportunity available to Pakistan to transform its bilateral relations from need-based cooperation to strategic partnership based on the mutual interest of both countries globally as well as regional realms of statecraft. You are talking about long-term strategic partnership. Surely, because what we have seen earlier, that is why our relationship with America is always characterized as love and hate relationship. Our mm. role roller coaster relations because that was if we see critically was need based when usa needed support of pakistan we became darling of usa and presently also one important aspect which we need to cater for is that as per the us myopic thought they are taking india as a counterweight against china and india becomes darling of usa in containment of china policy which breeds insecurity for Pakistan and for the region. Because mm. we need to sensitize the USA that their over-reliance on India and their strategic partnership for India in the region with the uh, Indian aspiration of the regional power will breed instability for the region, not for Pakistan, for the other countries around, for Sri Lanka, for Bhutan and Bangladesh also. In such an environment, I think this visit will be of paramount importance and will be significant as far as making USA realize that Pakistan is not now cooperating with USA for any need or for any benefit, but it is based on mutual respect as well as the interest 
convergence of interest of so, both uh, Brigadier retired Hamid uh, Brigadier retired Hamid your uh, your word I'm taking your word about uh, that whether Pakistan is darling of the United States or not right now because Biden is not undertaking uh, India's visit to attend the Republic Day so uh, uh, chief of army staff is there in Washington so how do you see this uh, aspect now whether we are again turning into the uh, darling of United States As far as these two visits are concerned, these two have different dimensions. One is more politically as well as, uh, I think, strategically oriented. The Biden visit to US, uh, to India, or to Chief of Army Staff visit to uh, USA. Basically, this is the military diplomacy and the military cooperation, which will lead to the political convergence of uh, interest also. As well as we see that Pentagon and U.S. officials' uh, engagement of Chief of Army Staff and Pakistan Army for the last one year, there has been number of visits made by the U.S. officials to GHQ, and they met Chief of Army Staff, and they assured that as far as TTP's threat is concerned, they are wary of that. But at the same time, what we see, that any practical uh, cooperation is not on the horizon. And I think this will be one of the dialogue on which uh, Chief of Army Staff would require U.S. assistance for surveillance, for intelligence uh, sharing, and also to making Afghan Taliban realize that their soil is... Brigadier Tad Hamid, your point well taken. Hassan, if you uh, want to add into that, because uh, U.S. President Biden is not visiting India, but uh, Chief of Army Staff of Pakistan is now... In Washington. Yeah, so I think in already you know currently U.S. relations there are there are certain strain in it, especially uh, the the reports about the, mm -hmm. the 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 raw policy of killing um, uh, overseas uh, the, the 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 Sikh leaders, and there were reports as the one done in Canada, mm -hmm. and uh, there were reports that the Raya was also planning to kill a Sikh leader in uh, in U.S. And I think it's definitely have that dented uh, the relation, but not to that extent uh, which mm -hmm. we say, especially to take the U.S. out of Quad. Or as the, uh, the, the 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 other uh, the, which regional uh, cooperation block, but I think as per I, I personally see this visit very important. Mm -hmm. At the moment, definitely it is focusing on defense, counter terror, and counter uh, counter drugs. Uh, like definitely will be depending on that. But you know this region, especially. Afghanistan is still, and I think it is it is a focus, and I think, and the U.S. is realizing that the way that it quit the region and uh, and uh, handed over uh, it in a in a, in 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 a, in a haste uh, to to the to the same people against whom the international community fought for, fought for almost two decades. So I think they definitely realize, and in such a situation, Pakistan is the only country in this in this region, and especially of the six neighbors of Afghanistan, which can be depended because U.S. and Pakistan has a long uh, a relation vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis, and it's a very good I think there's a lot in store uh, as per the Afghanis, Af Afghanistan is concerned. There's a lot of cooperation, a lot of note sharing, etc. So definitely, as Brigadier Sahab has rightly pointed out, uh, until recently, a lot of uh, senior military officers visited Pakistan. They interacted with the military officers. And I think it is after that, now General Munir is taking his first visit. And as I said, it will not only lead uh, uh, to, to, to bring both the countries, militaries closer to each other, definitely it will have a, politic a political political and economic uh, aspects also. Definitely. And Dr. Wasim, <coughs> when we are talking about Pakistan-U.S. relations, why it looks that the uh, U.S. has always the double standards. But uh, uh, on one hand, Pakistan is fighting a fierce war against terrorism. On the other hand, first in 80s and 90s, they, they halted uh, F-16s. Then uh, they have not uh, uh, given us um, AH-1Z uh, helicopters, gunship helicopters. Then they halted uh, the deal uh, between Pakistan and Turkey uh, related to uh, T-129 helicopters. So these helicopters are necessary to fight against terrorism. And Pakistan is fighting the war against terrorism. You are stressing upon that. But why they are doing this one to Pakistan? Let me highlight two angles to it. One from Pakistan's national security perspective hmm. and second from U.S. national security perspective. First from the U.S. national security perspective. While the United States can in the same breath say that since 1947, United States was all alone as a sole supplier of Pakistan's military hardware mm. and Pakistan's economic development. All the hydropower projects inside Pakistan then and the economic development even now. United States claims that in just last 20 years, 
US has supported by US dollar 32 billion. This is a rehearsed empirical mm. data. So from their perspective that they have gone all out to support Pakistan. But there has been a little problem that is the trust deficit. So from Pakistan's national security perspective, we have always said that the relationship has been transactional and mm. event oriented. While that event is over, the United States would change its face and move on. Mm. While the history has proved that way. However, when the United States National Security Advisor suggests, they would say the incidents like OBL, the incidents like Raymond Davis, the incidents like Salala, etc., have actually challenged the bilateral relations. Mm. So that's why the mutual mistrust has been going on. But both countries have realized and both wants to actually leave the past aside and move on on a fresh path. So Hassan Khan, uh, pertaining to the mistrust between Pakistan and United States, uh, U.S. has the Indocentric approach, then blind eye towards Afghanistan along with that. Uh, 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 there are lots of uh, hiccups and hurdles. So how do you see that United States uh, is going to address all those in future? I think, look, as far as the, uh, the, the relation between any two countries is concerned, that is, it, 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 it's based on the national interest. Mm. Until and unless my interest is served by the U.S., so definitely I will try to get closer to it. The day I realize that it is no more serving, as now Pakistan is now getting out of the blocks <coughs> politics. The reason is mm. that it is no more serving my interest. So I'm, I'm trying to have an independent uh, foreign policy. I am getting closer to my neighbors, especially the Chinese, and uh, even uh, we, are, we are trying to reset our relation with Russia. It may, I think, annoy the U.S. and the West also, but it is our needs. We are not looking after the needs of the West or the U.S. So I think the same is for the U.S. They, they, they see, uh, and unfortunately, as I said earlier, historically, U.S. was closer to Pakistan when they were dictators. So our political uh, government don't, do not have that that assets uh, which has been developed by the dictators uh, in, 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 in Washington. So historically, I think, and then it's continuity also. Unfortunately, in Pakistan, the political uh, system was not continued. So where, where, actually, where actually you see uh, uh, that uh, after the uh, U.S.-led coalition forces withdrawal from Afghanistan, where Pakistan-U.S. relations stands, and do you think that there is any, uh, 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 any room for uh, this region because... Uh, uh, Washington is supporting a lot to Delhi rather than uh, to this region. Well, I think Faisal, it's, it's a very important question. But definitely, I think, as, as, I, as I said earlier, the U.S. is now realizing its mistake that uh, immediately after, uh, after withdrawal from Afghanistan, uh, we were having the Ukraine issue. So mm -hmm. the most of the focus, the West and the U.S. focus turned to Ukraine to contain the, 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 the onslaught of Russia toward the West one. And after that, we have this Gaza and the, 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 the Palestinian, the Israeli conflict. So I think it, but despite uh, at, at a period where the Ukraine conflict is at its peak, where the Gaza conflict is at its peak, U.S. is now focusing, is also realizing that it need not to ignore this region. The reason mm -hmm. is Af Afghanistan, they, 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 it is a region where I think it's a four or five nuclear countries are located here. It's Russia, it's China, it's India, it's Pakistan. Means you think that um, uh, uh, this region is still relevant to United States? It's so very relevant. There are more than, I think, 1 billion and uh, 1.5 billion population, more, almost 2 billion population. We include the Chinese also. So I think it is, it is a, a, a economically strategically and uh, politically, as I said, you have Russia in this region, you have China in this region, you have India in this region, you have Iran in this region. So th it is it is the politically, the I think no other region is uh, as important for any superpower as this region will be. Okay, your, your point well taken. Brigadier Retired Hamid, uh, 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 as uh, the Chief of Army Staff is there in Washington, so do you think that uh, United States would also pay some heed upon at least 25,000 of the Afghans who has to be relocated and uh, 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 have to be resettled uh, into the United States because they are residing in Pakistan from the, uh, from the last couple of years. And uh, obviously, Pakistan has now the policy of uh, uh, expelling all those uh, uh, illegal foreigners who are uh, residing in Pakistan. This will be one of the, I think, key discussion point between the U.S. official as well as the chief of army staff but here again, I want to reiterate that Pakistan Army is the sole institution which is trying to ensure sovereignty as well as the freedom of country diplomatically also and in the, a very, I think, prominent place in the region also. Here, Chief of Army Staff would 
be of the view that Pakistan government policy of eviction of illegal immigrants from Pakistan is in the national interest of Pakistan. And also if we see from the statistics that 24 site bomb bombing has been done in Pakistan and out of those 24, 17 were Afghan nationals. So such like uh, proof will be also given to the US officials and they will be made to realize that the Afghan government as well as the Afghan nationals, especially those illegal Afghan nationals residing within Pakistan are a source of insecurity as well as terrorism and Pakistan military forces as well as Pakistan society is facing the brunt of, I think, very sad episode of, again, resurgence of terrorism in Pakistan. And here, Chief of Army Staff would persuade the US official and the US government that they should provide full support to Pakistan to curb this tendency of terrorism. Uh, uh, let's, let's, for example, if uh, there would be some agreement uh, between Pakistan and United States to take on uh, terrorism and the uh, terrorist outfits in Afghanistan. So when Kabul is supporting those 23 organizations to be at the Afghan soil, giving them refuge, facilities, training, uh, even the weapons and all that. So how it would contribute? Because uh, if Kabul is not ready to take action against all those, how it would be possible for United States and Pakistan to take action on those against uh, all those outfits who are in Afghanistan? If we see in the context of geostrategical interest of USA in Afghanistan, especially after the withdrawal of their forces, I think uh, they have realized in their report also, and they have given the evidence that uh, Afghan government has taken steps against uh, the terrorism being done by the IS Khurasan, and they have eliminated that threat to almost uh, diminishing level. But at the same time, the uh, support of Afghan government to TTP has gone strength. And it is the financing, it is the moral and material support provided by the Afghan government. And here, I would like to highlight that the Afghan uh, government, as per the Doha agreement, agreed to that their soil will not be used against cross-border terrorism. And this aspect, the US official has a lien own Afghan government and they can also pursue with Pakistan and other regional powers that the Afghan government is not behaving responsibly and not going to fulfill its promises. And uh, as we say, US, they have the capability militarily also. And we have seen that the drone attack carried out by them. And they can also support Pakistan militarily also. They can provide the armament and they can also provide your, us your, with your point well taken brigadier sir your point well taken dr wasim uh, when we are talking about pakistan us relation even uh, just uh, for example pakistan right in the middle of us china rivalry and also rapprochement so how do you see that uh, whether pakistan has lots of problems or hurdles or pakistan has the opportunity as well uh, to excel between united states and china let me take you to the history I think United States was desperate in 1970s and begged Pakistan for its rapprochement with China. Obviously. Pakistan took a secret visit of Henry Kissinger to China. As a result, Richard Nixon's visit happened in 1972 to China and a new world order was actually formed through a rapprochement between United States and China. And that was a time when it was a peak of uh, Soviet ex uh, communist expansionism. So Pakistan demonstrated skillful statecraft as well as diplomacy of having a very balanced relations between the United States and China at the time of another superpower which was there in the mm. form of Soviet Union. So this rep model is available and United States is and both China are grateful to Pakistan for this rapprochement. Today Pakistan is still has a leverage because it has a very good relations with China. Pakistan also has a reasonably good relation with the United States. And those relationships are actually strengthening with every passing, passing day. Mm. The US has also realized that there should be no zero sum option between Pakistan or India or any other regional country. So therefore, they are also trying to reset relations with Pakistan. The greatest dimension of this visit, which is very positive and very good is that these relations are now broad based. It is not security centric alone. And, and bilateral. Let, bilateral. And let me quote one data. Today, there are 1 million Pakistani diaspora in a very good position in uh, the United States. 
Pakistan United States knowledge corridor has expanded and today there are 8000 students and every year 800 are going Pakistan is the biggest recipient of Fulbright scholarships so this is in a investment in our next generation and United States is eager to even further strengthen that US is also coming to help out Pakistan to in terms of uh, providing some sort of funds to definitely nest to and take lungs. this forward uh, Hassan uh, how do you see uh, the United States investments in Pakistan particularly uh, we have collaboration in agriculture sector health sector education sector so how do you see the future of uh, Pakistan US economic relations I think this uh, for Pakistan as I said earlier uh, US is also very important uh, economically politically too but economically too and as I said in security aspects Brigadier Saab is pointed it out that how can it help Pakistan out in the security front. But economically, you know, uh, uh, whenever Pakistan was in, uh, was in need, uh, I think whether it was the uh, floods, whether the natural disasters, etc., the U.S. has always come forward and it helped uh, Pakistan. And by the way, United States is the huge investor in, in yeah, Pakistan. Uh, Along with that, uh, it's the biggest, uh, biggest export destination yeah, as well. Pakistan export, biggest export destination is the U.S. And I think in the, in the international um, financial bodies, you know, it is the U.S. Uh, which has also blocked and also assisted Pakistan mm -hmm. uh, in especially getting the financial assistance from international financial institutions. So I think economically, uh, one thing I want to say, I think pa this is the time that Pakistan has realized now that we need not depend on one country, which in the past I think we committed that uh, mistakes. Now, your earlier question you asked to Dr. Saab about the uh, balancing between the Chinese and the and the and, and the and the United States, I think it is a, it, it is it is just a balancing while walking on a tight rope. I think, and uh, Pakistan, I think it is a golden opportunity because uh, now uh, almost all the institutions in Pakistan, whether it's political, whether uh, security related, whether it's civil society, now they are on on the same page vis-a-vis establishing relation with both the countries. Every nobody says that now we are with Chinese, so. Uh, uh, give a short up call to the US or others. No, everybody say that we must have a good relations. We, we need to further strengthen our relation with Chinese. We need to reset our relation with the Russia. We need, we need to not to severe our relations despite mm. the fact that United States has done in the past things uh, which has annoyed Pakistan and the Pakistani establishment uh, in, in, in a very crucial time, whether it was in the 1971, whether it was in the uh, post uh, Soviet withdrawal from Afghanistan and whether it was the third uh, this this other withdrawal from Afghanistan by the US it has always to an extent I think put Pakistan in a very bad positions uh, a number of time but despite that I think uh, both the countries have, uh, have carried over uh, carried along uh, with each other so I think there will be we will have a good relation with China now the nations want that we definitely would, would definitely we want uh, better no. relations with both no. of them. Uh, Dr. Wasim, uh, one last question. That is related to the uh, IT uh, cooperation between Pakistan and US and also the space cooperation between Pakistan and US. And US was the first ever country uh, that supported in 1960s to have a uh, uh, space program in Pakistan. So how do you see that? I think fr only from IT's perspective, last year we have the IT export to United States alone was 1 billion US dollars. Obviously. So there's a huge IT market and the United States as it is investing in the human resource development inside Pakistan. So as we proceed in the coming years, there will be yet another, uh, I would say, opportunity for the human resource uh, base as well as IT uh, soft parks as well as IT export. And space cooperation, there's a huge era available inside Pakistan as well as in the United States. However, the United States has been a bit reluctant for an open uh, open space cooperation with Pakistan ever since they built the strategic partnership with the India. So therefore, over here, United States is trying to have demonstrate it still towards India. So therefore, it must might be constrained. So that actually vacuum is being now filled by the China. So therefore, we have better relations with China as well as Turkey for this space cooperation. So United States is a bit reluctant on having uh, open space cooperation with Pakistan. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, please. Seconds. This especially now, Pakistan need to work on attracting the private U.S. investors. Historically, very important we point, mostly yes, depended yes. on the public sectors of the United States. I think this is the time now that Pakistan shall attract 
the private investors because because that become an assets for you then uh, at the site of uh, sort of an agent uh, to 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 strengthen the relation between thank the two you countries. very much thank you very much dr wasim thank for being with us thank you very much hasan for being with us in the studios and thank you very much brigadier retired hamid rashid uh, for being with us online uh, so uh, viewers uh, as our Panelists suggested that uh, now Pakistan and U.S. relations are turning into a broad-based and bilateral relation. So in these relations, we are excelling into different aspects, different sectors, and that is very encouraging. And not only the public sector investment from the United States, but also panelists suggested that uh, uh, Pakistan has to attract uh, the private sector investment from different private companies of the United States, along with uh, the Pakistani, overseas Pakistanis who are living there in the United States. They are very important, and uh, uh, Army Chief uh, General Sayyid Asim Munir has also uh, held meetings with the overseas Pakistanis as well. And uh, United States is a very important player uh, when we are talking about the regional aspects, particularly to resolve the Kashmir issue. Along with that, uh, the issue in Afghanistan regarding the terrorist organizations, and uh, U.S. and Pakistan can go together to counter-terrorism in that sense uh, uh, for a developed and prosperous region, stability and uh, forever peace here. Uh, this is uh, today's foresight and uh, it's time to sign off. Allah Hafiz Nasir.